Now, the HS2 high-speed rail project, which runs through Buckinghamshire, has an estimated £3.3 billion funding gap. That's according to a National Audit Office report. It says the business case for the rail link from London to Birmingham hasn't been adequately explained, and there's a shortfall in the figures, which the government has yet to decide how to fill. Well, the Whitehall Spending Watchdog is calling for more clarity over how the project will benefit regional economic growth. But the government says the report is based on old data. First of all, let's speak to Rail Minister Simon Burns. Simon, is this report accurate? Has the government got its sums wrong? No, they haven't got their sums wrong. Um, we don't recognise the figure that the um, National Audit Office are using for a so-called black hole. We have carefully costed this project. We have mechanisms in place to make sure that we don't overrun the budget. And as you'd expect, we're in constant um, communication with the Treasury to make sure that it is tightly controlled so there is not a problem. Where I think the problem has arisen with the report is that the National Audit Office have drawn conclusions in May 2013 based on a business case that is 18 months old and in that intervening 18 months there have been significant moves forward in the project so their data, which have not been taken into account. Their data is inaccurate, completely wrong. I, I believe it is, in, it is inaccurate in the context of May 2013. So that 3.3 billion shortfall doesn't exist? Everything's on track We and do fine. not recognise that figure. We do not recognise that figure at all. Do you recognise any shortfall? No, we, no, I don't. Because, as I said earlier, we have got um, robust mechanisms in place. We are monitoring the situation very carefully to make sure that we don't overrun the projected budget that has been given for building both phases of High Speed 2. And we are in constant um, communications with the Treasury to make sure that we avoid the very problem that the Audit Office is talking about. Cheryl Gillan, the Conservative MP for Chesham and Amersham, says that you haven't included the VAT. Well, the VAT has been included, but as you will appreciate, when it's between two government departments, it is a situation where the money is moving round the system. But we have included VAT um, in the um, calculations and taken it into account. When you say the money's moving around the system, I don't quite understand what that means. Are you saying that you're finding it hard to keep track of the money? No, no, what I am saying is that if you pay VAT, that goes to the Treasury, and the Treasury then gives back money to um, High Speed 2 because this is a government-funded project. That's what I mean by it's going round in the system. We've heard this week that three-quarters of the compensation claims that have been submitted by fa families affected by this have been rejected. I is that one way of keeping the costs down? No, it certainly is not. What we have brought in is an exceptional hardship scheme to help people who need to sell their houses now um, because of uh, either a family tragedy, a breakdown of marriage, or um, they're having to move because their jobs have taken them elsewhere. And um, it is there to give help to people then. And what I would say to anyone who um, is caught in this situation and is having difficulties, they should get in touch with High Speed 2 um, to talk through the problems to seek a solution. It isn't much co uh, help, though, is it, for those three quarters of the families that have had their claims rejected? Pe people are being well, trampled over, aren't they? Well, no, they're not being trampled over, but obviously it's inappropriate for me to talk about individual cases well, I'm not or speaking the individual I'm reason not or, the individual individual re or the individual I'm, I appreciate that. I'm not asking about individual as to cases. Why that may be the case. I'm speaking about 75% of the claims that have been rejected. It, 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 people are being walked over, aren't they? No, they're not being walked over at all. Um, that scheme is put in place to help people who find difficulties and my advice is that they should talk to High Speed 2 Limited, talk through their problems to see if the exceptional hardship scheme is able to assist them and it all depends on the reasons why they're selling the property as to whether they will qualify for help. Uh, would you just stay on the line uh, for a second because we have uh, Adam who lives just outside Great Missenden. Uh, good morning Adam. Good morning. Adam, you'd like to, to make a point to Simon Burns, would you? Well, yes. Uh, I, I live just outside Great Missenden, and my house and my neighbour's house is 124 metres from the centre of the line. 
And my neighbour, who uh, lost their job, they've applied three times and have been turned down three times. And because I'm a wheelchair user and disabled, I can't even afford to apply because even if I got uh, onto that scheme, I would be so far out of pocket because of my disability that I couldn't afford to move. Rail Minister Simon Burns, what's, what would you say to Adam? Well, it would be totally inappropriate for me to discuss individual cases, particularly as I do not have all the facts in front of me. It was only a relatively short clip. But my advice... Well, Adam's, Adam's, Adam's here. Well, you can talk to him. Hang on. Can he's I live. finish? Well, you can talk to him. He's, like, he's not I a clip. Finish? He's live. My advice is that he goes and talks to High Speed 2 Limited to see if help can be provided I've been um, doing that for three years. of his special circumstances. And Simon, I have Adam... a feeling that... If, hang on. If I, ha I have a feeling that if this is the gentleman um, whose case was raised on... Um, the Newsnight programme about two weeks ago, um, if he is that gentleman, um, and his case sounds um, familiar to me in that respect, yes. um, then High Speed 2 are more than prepared to talk to him to see if a solution can Adam, be made. Adam, are you that gentleman that was on Newsnight? Yes, Adam? I am. Yes, he's also one of our listeners. Have you spoken to uh, High Speed 2, Adam? Uh, I've spoken with, they, they've come on previous occasions, but all they've been able to do is just sympathise with my case and say there's nothing they can do. Simon, we sorry, have, sorry, sorry, Simon, what, what did you yes, say? Has he spoken to them since that news night programme? Yes, 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 we now have a further meeting set up uh, where they're going to come and, but we can't actually find out the purpose of the meeting, whether they're going to come and yet again explain that there's nothing they can do because it's a ministerial decision. Simon, did, did, I, did I hear you mutter something under your breath? No, I haven't oh, said a thing. Oh, I thought I, I thought I heard you say this is a disgrace. Sorry, apologies if, if, uh, no, I, if, if I mis misheard that. Uh, Adam, very quickly, uh, in response to, uh, to, to Simon, you're not happy with the situation. What do you do next? Uh, well, we've got to wait to see what HS2 are going to propose. Uh, and then I'm sure we're going to have to carry on the fight. Simon? Yes? Yes, it, 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 it does sound a little dismissive of people like Adam. We, we hear stories like this all the time doing this kind of show. It does sound a little dismissive. I think the best thing is to wait until the gentleman has had the forthcoming meeting with High Speed 2 Limited to see what um, emanates from that meeting. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Adam, thank you. And uh, Simon Burns, Rail Minister.